So you just bought a new laser level and you're ready to use it at the job site. Well, before you head out, you might first want to check to make sure it is accurately calibrated as you wouldn't want to invest significant amounts of time and money into a project only to find that it is out of level or not plumb. It is not that difficult to check calibration on a self-leveling laser level, but it's very helpful if you first understand why you should check it, not only when you first get it, but periodically to make sure it stays within manufacturer specifications. Hi, I'm Calvin and I'm going to show you how a 3D self-leveling laser works and how to check its calibration. In this tutorial, I'll be using a HUPAR 3D laser level to demonstrate how to check leveling accuracy, but these instructions could apply to other similar laser levels too. This self-leveling 3D laser level incorporates class II laser diodes that emit laser beams which are refracted through prisms into thin horizontal and vertical lines radiating 360 degrees outwards. The horizontal lines projected outwards on the walls are used to indicate level, and in self-leveling mode, pivot left to right on the x-axis and forward and aft on the y-axis. Calibration is checked across these two axes. The vertical lines projected towards the ceiling and floor are used to indicate plumb, and in self-leveling mode, pivot on the x-axis. In self-leveling mode, the vertical laser plane does not pivot around the z-axis, but this should still be measured when doing a calibration check. Here we will first check calibration for the horizontal laser line by placing the laser level either on a tripod with a rotating mount or on a flat surface that has been checked for true level. Make sure the laser level reads zero in both the X and Y axes as you will be rotating at 360 degrees and this will help ensure the laser level's internal pivot point remains at the same height as it is rotated. Place the laser level five meters away from a wall and about one meter away from another wall perpendicular to where you will be taking measurements. The distance to this second wall is not so critical but should be at least one half meter. Also note that this will be used as a reference only but it will help to ensure the level surface or tripod the laser is sitting on is not tilted, which could give erroneous dimensions. Now turn the laser on and draw a line for the reference mark. Then draw a second line on the far wall. Here we will draw a red line which will reference half the amount of tilt across the Y axis. All additional marks will be made on this wall to determine the accuracy of the laser level. Now rotate the laser level 90 degrees. Ensure the laser line is on the reference mark. If not, check to make sure the height of the laser level did not change when you rotated it. Now make a mark on the far wall adjacent to the first one, but in a different color. This time we will use a blue mark, and this will reference half the amount of tilt across the x-axis. Rotate the laser level 90 degrees again. Then make a third mark on the far wall in red. Rotate the laser level 90 degrees one more time, and make a fourth mark on the far wall in blue. Now measure the distance between the red marks. This will tell us the amount of total tilt across the y-axis. Now measure the distance between the blue marks. This will tell us the amount of tilt across the x-axis. To know whether or not the laser level is out of calibration, we first check the manufacturer's specification. We see that the HUPAR specification is plus or minus three millimeters when the measured distance is 10 meters from the wall. However, since we are measuring just 5 meters from the laser level to the wall, we will next determine the amount the 360 degree laser plane tilts from true level. If you recall, we checked the horizontal Y axis by making our first red mark on the wall, and when the laser level was rotated 180 degrees, we made our second red mark. Note that both these marks are on either side of true level. Also note that it shouldn't be possible for both marks to be either above or below true level unless maybe the prism got distorted and is bending the laser light plane, which I guess would indicate a severe manufacturing defect that simple calibration could not fix. If your laser level has this condition and is not within leveling accuracy specifications, you will need to send it to the manufacturer for repair as simply adjusting the counterweights will not fix this problem. The HUPAR specification for leveling accuracy is plus or minus 3 millimeters at 10 meters, which actually means a total of no more than 3 millimeters, as in plus or minus 3 millimeters. Since we are taking measurements at 5 meters, the maximum limits are one half that or plus or minus 1.5 millimeter. Perform the same check for the blue marks to check if they were out of calibration across the X axis keeping in mind that the measurement between the two farthest marks, regardless of color, is leveling accuracy. 
If after measuring you find the laser level is out of calibration, then adjustment to the counterweight for the y-axis is needed. See my video in the link above on how to calibrate laser levels. Next we will perform a check for the vertical laser line. Some lasers may only have one vertical line for plumb, but for 3D laser levels there will be a second one on the front of the laser level. The vertical laser line is emitted 360 degrees outwards from the laser diode, creating a laser plane that is perpendicular to the x-axis. We first start by placing the laser level in a room on the floor. Since this is a 3D laser level, there are two vertical lasers. I will show you how to check the one on the side, but the process is the same for the other one on the front. Note that when we turn on the vertical laser, a 360 degree laser plane is emitted vertically up to the ceiling and down to the floor. We will make two marks on the floor and one on the ceiling where we plan to check calibration. The important thing to remember is that you need at least three points in a triangular pattern to check vertical calibration. We will then rotate the 3D laser level 180 degrees, turn it on, and align the two marks on the floor first, and then check to see how close the laser plane is to the mark on the ceiling. It is not important to have the laser level perfectly level on the floor, and it can be off by as much as 3 or 4 degrees. Just be sure the laser is unlocked and moves freely. Let me explain. If we look inside this laser level, we can see two laser diodes attached to a pendulum. Each laser diode emits a laser beam through a prism, which causes the light to refract into a radial pattern, creating a thin line 360 degrees around the prism. If the pendulum is perfectly balanced and the laser diodes perfectly aligned, a horizontal laser beam, or more appropriately, laser plane, is emitted across the X and Y axes at perfect true level and a vertical laser beam or plane is emitted across the z-axis and is perfectly plumb. The pendulum is supported by a two-axis gimbal bearing which allows it to swing freely in the x and y axes. Being as a pendulum has the force of gravity to keep it fixed in a vertical position, even while the laser level is tilted, we don't have to be concerned with maintaining true level up to about 3 or 4 degrees, which is where the pendulum will hit internal bumpers and no longer swing freely. Therefore, when checking calibration for vertical or plumb, it is not so important to have the laser level on a truly flat and level surface. Now let's check calibration for vertical accuracy by placing the laser level on the floor. In this example, we are in a room that has a 3 meter high ceiling. You will need to adjust your calculations if your ceiling height is different. Turn on the 3D laser level and mark the floor where the laser line is projected. The dimension, though not critical, should be about 5 meters, with the laser level in between and about 1 meter from one of the marks on the floor. Then make a mark on the ceiling where the laser line is projected. Now turn the laser level around 180 degrees and make sure it is aligned to the marks on the floor. Then make a new mark on the ceiling where the laser line is projected and measure the distance between those marks. According to this chart from Hupar, the specification for accuracy of the vertical plumb line is 6 mm or less at 10 meters, 3 mm or less at 5 meters, or 2 mm or less at 3 meters. Lastly, we will check the orthogonal accuracy of the vertical laser lines. But first, let me explain what the orthogonal accuracy check is, and then how to do it. A 3D laser will have two vertical laser lines that intersect each other at 90 degrees. When two lines cross at right angles to each other, we see that they are orthogonal, and performing an orthogonal check ensures that both lines are at right angles to each other. If the vertical laser lines are not aligned at right angles to each other, then they need to be checked to see if the amount they deviate from 90 degrees is within allowable manufacturer specifications for orthogonal accuracy. To check orthogonal accuracy, place your 3D laser level in a large open room, ideally one that is at least 5 meters by 10 meters. It can be done in a smaller room, but you will first need to do some fairly simple right angle calculations to adjust for manufacturer's accuracy limits. Turn on the laser level, ensuring that both vertical laser lines are turned on, and then make a mark on the floor parallel with the side vertical laser line. Label this mark A. Measure 5 meters forward of the laser level, and move the laser level to that location. Ensure the side vertical laser line is still aligned with mark A. Now, mark a cross on the floor where both vertical laser lines intersect and label this cross mark B. Measure 5 more meters forward of the laser level and make a third mark on the floor that is parallel with the side vertical laser line. 
and label this mark C. Double check to make sure all three marks A, B, and C are perfectly aligned with the side vertical laser line. Now, without disturbing the laser level, measure 5 meters perpendicular and from the side of the laser level, this time measuring along the front vertical laser line. Make a mark on the wall or mark the floor if the wall is not 5 meters away and label this mark D. Now, rotate the laser level 90 degrees and line up both the vertical laser lines to marks B, C, and D. Do not try to line up to mark A. Now, make a mark next to mark A and label this mark E. Note the distance between marks A and E. Also note that marks A and E join at B, creating an angle which cannot be more than one half degree. Since we are checking orthogonal accuracy at five meters, we can calculate for right triangle and determine that the maximum deviation is just less than 4.5 millimeters. In this simulation, we can see that the major deviation is about two millimeters, so we are within manufacturer specification. If you are doing your measurements in a smaller room, about half the size, say two and a half meters, the maximum deviation would be about 2.2 millimeters. If your 3D laser level's orthogonal accuracy is out of spec, it could be that either the side or the front laser is out of adjustment, as one or the other of the laser planes is rotated too far about its Z axis. It is recommended that you return your 3D laser level to the manufacturer for adjustment, where they will remove the laser covers to gain access to the adjustments for changing the rotational angle of the laser diodes. Well, I hope you found this video tutorial on checking 3D laser level accuracy to be beneficial, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave any comments or questions below, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. And most of all, have a great day!